Welcome to The Digital Difference with Scott Gulliver and Oliver Moradi. Well, hello everyone and welcome to episode nine of The Digital Difference with me, Scott Gulliver and Oliver Moradi. How is it going, Ollie? Yeah, very well, Scott. How are you? I'm doing really good, thank you. Yeah, um, yeah, just just you know, busy, but the right amount of busy at the moment. Not too burnt out and overwhelmed, but keeping pretty pretty thick with it at the moment. Um, yeah, how about yourself? Yeah, not too bad. Um, like you, busy, but if we weren't busy, what would we do? Hey, <laughs> yeah, this is true. Well, we'd 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 have time to a podcast, I guess, and we've just about made time for that today, so that's good. Um, so you picked the topic today, Ollie. What are we talking about? Yeah, Scott. So today I really want to talk about um, COVID nineteen and the and like how the new digital world's going to look. Um, I think that it's really important to sort of explore this because obviously COVID nineteen is on everyone's mind. It's globally affecting everybody at the moment, and I feel that everybody's being quite reactive um, to COVID nineteen. But no one's actually planning for the future. Um, everyone's kind of there's a lot of t- like hints and, like hints and tips online saying you know how you should be working at the moment, but no one's saying how you should be working in the future. And I think it's because everybody kind of feels that um, COVID-19 is going to all of a sudden stop as soon as the vaccine comes out or something like that happens. And then we're all going to go back to a normal way of working. And I don't think that it's going to be that easy for everybody to revert to that normal way of working. So this is kind of why I wanted to explore it today. Um, you know, COVID-19 has completely changed how the business and economic world operates at the moment. So, um, you know, there's going to be a, a massive reliance on this sort of digital. Um, and I think that it's, it's, kind of, it's quite interesting to explore how that works. Um, you know, with that reliance on digital, I mean, there's going to be new job roles that are going to have to also accompany that um, reliance on this on digital as well so you know how what these new job roles going to look like in the new world um what sort of job roles are they going to be you know we look at things like uh shop assistants now i mean that could all be done digitally from now on you know um we don't know how how the new world's going to look i know that we're partially out of lockdown now anyway um but you know there is a risk that another pandemic could hit there is a risk now that um, we could go back into a sort of second peak or third peak, if you will. So, you know, companies now need to start looking at different ways of operating within this sort of reactive environment. Um, yeah. And like you said, it's, um, you know, everyone had to be pretty reactive at the start because it hit so quickly, didn't it, really? Um, yeah. or at least the, the full force of it did. Um, but it's kind of forced everyone through quite an a period of innovation almost hasn't it it's forced us to try and act differently and like you said even if things do go back i suspect that that there's probably going to be new ways of working that a lot of companies will adopt by default um it's kind of thrown people into this um you know working from home and being remote first and and trying this out and for a lot of companies i suspect they'll see the benefit of that and we're already seeing lots of companies saying that they're going to just extend these practices you know for for a a little while now so i think as you said that it's not going to be a short-term thing is it Exactly, exactly. And if you look at it, um, you know, realistically, I mean, Google have already come out and said, you know, all their company can work from home. I know pretty much I think Silicon Valley is going to be empty by the end of this. Yeah. Um, You know, because there's just no reliance on people. There's no need for people to be in the office anymore. The only reason why people do go into the office is for that sort of social connection and that that one-on-one time with, um, with your team members and things like that. But I don't think that's actually needed anymore, realistically. Um, you know, we'll explore that a bit later on. Um, but you know, this kind of stuff, it, it's just not needed. So, um, there is sort of that, that, that new uh, reliance on digital and it's going to be, it's going to be quite interesting to see how these new roles will work around that. A good thing about this is though, like small companies will be able to benefit greatly from this. And I think that's because smaller companies are much, um, find it much easier to adapt to change. Whereas sort of larger companies will probably struggle with it a bit more because they're kind of set in their ways and it's much more difficult to change um, a larger company um, from from like the current operating models that they have and that they rely on at the moment. Yeah, we talked about this right back in episode one, didn't we, about how 
companies need to almost operate in this model of being reactive first, don't they? They need to have these plans because, uh, you know, the pandemic was a quite an extreme example, but there's always going to be cases where companies need to adapt. And like you say, the more, the, the easier it is for a company to, to do that, the better off they're going to be um, in whatever changing world we end up in. Um, yeah, it's, it'll be interesting to see because it's kind of leveled the playing field in some regard, hasn't it? It's it's opened up lots of opportunities for companies who might have been struggling um, equally. You know, as we know, it's been pretty terrible for the economy and lots of companies are definitely suffering. But equally, there, there does seem to be a whole host of opportunity out there. It's just a case of um, of finding the way to to utilize that if, if you can. Absolutely. And, and this is this is the issue that I think that larger companies are probably having at the moment, and maybe even like the anxiety around larger companies is they've got these smaller companies who are going to um, like revel in this sort of environment at the moment because yeah. they're so adaptable to change and there's going to be a lot of demand coming from new areas where normal companies are used to operating in certain ways. Um, and it's going to be really hard for them to expand into these new areas a smaller company can dive in there and all of a sudden take up that, all of that demand. So it's, um, again, it comes back to that sort of supply and demand again. Um, but these smaller companies probably have, um, especially within it, in the digital world, um, a much easier way of supplying. So, um, and, you know, making that, making that sort of supply personal and personalized. Um, I'm being very vague here. I understand that, but, um, we'll kind of go into a bit more as we go into the podcast a bit. So um, first thing I kind of want to talk about is sort of the digital workplace. I think obviously that's, that's the big thing now. That's a big change. You know, most people are working from home. So, um, you know, the digital workplace is now going to be sort of like the office, if you will. Um, the office has now changed to a sort of an online function really isn't it um it's not yeah. really a, a physical place you go to anymore it's it's a team's call or a zoom call so um you know this is this is i think this is really really important um to sort of explore this this new digital workplace and how it's going to work um you know the first and i think the first major important thing that if you are a small business or a large business is to equip your employees with the right tools and the best practices for this new environment um obviously i know that they was really reactive at first and a lot of companies are set up for you to work from home so straight away you know you you had the bare minimum um so you had yeah. um you had your computer that could log onto a network what have you but i mean when you're working from in a digital environment do you have the right software to sustain you know constant communication um, I'm going to go into it later, but more um, around the digital content that you actually need to do your role when you're working from home full time. You know, a lot of time people are, are relying on like meetings to talk to each other, to share notes and stuff like that. Maybe this is now going to be one of those things where sharing platforms become more prominent, cloud pr platforms become more prominent as well. Um, and this just kind of um, sort of enables um, that digital workplace to become uh, functioning properly and successful. Um, you know, I think uh, another uh, big part of this is also to show trust in your employees um, to complete these tasks in this within this digital workspace. Uh, there's a there's a big thing around. Well, at the moment, there's a big thing around. Um, you know, because out of sight, kind of out of mind. Maybe people are just doing whatever. You know, there's probably this this thing in the back of a lot of business owner minds you know where small or big whether their employees are actually at home doing the work or whether they're just hoovering and shopping and right you know playing games um yeah. you never know they might do that you know and, I, I, and i'm not going to name any names but i know people who do so um you know there, there is a, a reliance on that kind of um that trust if you will and people are going to have to and i think companies are going to have to start showing a lot of trust in their employees and, you know, have this sort of agile um, working environment. Yeah. The thing with, with it, though, I think, is that people, when they're at home, I mean, going to an office every day and sitting in the nine to five, we know that's a pretty outdated way of working. And people get very little um, productive time during those hours and, and often just like sit there in front of the computer trying to look busy. Um, we will do it because it's, it's not the best way to work and that's kind of been proven on lots of bases. But yeah, I think when people are at home, 
there's there's a level of trust, but I think we all know we've got things going on at home as well, especially at the moment where your entire family is at home um, in a lot of cases. Um, you're going to be looking after kids, trying to sort out um, childcare for that. And and equally, there's, there's going to be distractions around the house. And I think actually kind of coupling remote working where you can with a level of um, a level of just like autonomy to, to the employees of, of you figure out how best you're going to work. As long as the work gets done, that's great. And um, obviously meetings and stuff need some overlap for working hours, but generally as long as the tasks get done and that should really be the focus less around, are you sat in front of your computer from nine to five and, and logging off then, or are you getting the work done and who really cares about what you're doing the rest of the time? Um, if you can find, if you work best from six to 12 and then do a few hours in the afternoon, you know, so be it, that, that's, that's great. And people can kind of work their own life around it. I think adopting that kind of attitude will really start to pay off um, when people look at people working from home and there doesn't there then need to be this constant monitoring of, oh, that person's not been online for an hour. What are they doing? Yeah, absolutely. And I was going to expand onto this a bit more later on, but um, you've, you've kind of summed it up there perfectly, Scott. It, it's, it's one of those situations where work-life balance and home-life balance have now become one. Yeah. Um, so, um, you know, th- there's this, uh, I know that didn't really make sense, sort of <laughs> work-life and home-life balance, but work-life and home-life have now become one. So um, mm-hmm. when I say like show, showing trust in employees, um, to be able to like complete the tasks and things like that. It's more around the fact that, you know, just allow them to complete the tasks in their own time, allow them to work within an, 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 a, well, allow them to approach it within an agile way, um, you know, and, and have that trust in them. They will complete the task. And if they don't and they're struggling in some way, that's when you then have to address the issue. Um, this is new, not just for a business, but this is also new for employees as well. So employees are trying to figure out how to sort of work within this environment. And, um, you know, you've got to be supportive in that hundred uh, percent. You know, this isn't just happening to businesses. It's happening to everybody at the moment. So yeah, it's really about kind of, um, how you can help them in that, in that sense. Yeah. I think it, like a large part of the success of that will often actually be the manager, um, or the, the, kind of supervisor of the work changing their ways as well i think for the longest time now we've we've had a lot of managers who who do just do that job of of making sure everyone's kind of sat down looking busy um and there's not this this focus on making sure the work is good and, and on time and and treating people with a level of respect that allows them to figure out how best to do that work um so i think there's going to be a bit of a culture shock for primarily for those types of people and and having ensuring that they that they are set up right to kind of give work out in the best way but also then monitor that work and make sure that that it's being done to a good level um is pretty it's going to be the only way really to make that successful um way of working yeah 100 percent um so yeah and and like also i think the another another thing about the digital workplace as well is you know, we have, we've talked about having the sort of right tools, the best practices going forward. Um, but what, you know, there's, there's also things that are essential to the business, the businesses themselves as well. And that's sort of like increased security and, and increased like compliance. Um, you know, you, when you're working at, in an office and stuff like that, the security and the compliance is, is going to be more tight because everything's contained. It's when it's local service. So you're working off local service there. Um, I know obviously when you're remote working, you're also logging into remote servers, but it's just everything's within a closed network um, and can yep. be within a closed network. When you work from home, you're, you're kind of susceptible, aren't you, to more to increased attacks like cyber attacks. And, you know, also, you know, you might be work, you might be in your support bubble with random people in a household that you share with, um, but you don't really know these people. And, you might be dealing with sensitive information. Um, so, you know, there's there's also that sort of high level of security that sort of companies need to start looking at. And this is all about, you know, working from that digital workplace. Is you don't quite know your company, you as a company, you don't know where your employees are and what they're doing. Um, so I think it's, you, you know what they're doing to a certain extent, but you don't know who's around them. Um, and you don't know, um, how they what sort of network they're operating on you know they might just have the standard um, broadband which is absolutely fine for everybody but it might not have the the, the best security um, you're 
you know, so there's a lot of, there's all, for me personally, I found that I've had to work off my personal laptop a few times when doing work on my work laptop um, because there's certain things that just don't work from when you're working from home. Uh, and then this is, again, the company not providing probably the right tools and, and best practices for me. So um, I've had to find innovative ways. And with that, there's a security risk. So, you know, you do get these issues. Um, and I think that that's something that needs to be stepped up almost immediately to ensure that your business is secure and safe online. Yeah, I think this is just where education comes into place, though, isn't it? And, and IT teams are, are great are greatly positioned here to be able to to let the organization know about how best to um you know to make make sure that their data is kept safe um yeah that must have been a pretty interesting time i i i dread to think what must have, must have been good through these organizations who have a lot of kind of internal servers that no one can access from from outside of their the network and that must have been a nightmare for those companies Absolutely. um kind you of forced to that, get modern yeah you got to think that a lot of people don't have access to the internet because you know they, they might do an admin based job um and all of a sudden they've been asked to to do that from home so you know there's all these uh these permissions that probably need to be given yeah um so you know it teams almost immediately must have been under pressure yeah to sort of like give the whole company this kind of um especially larger companies um these accesses and uh, these permissions so you know I, I, can, I, f- I feel for it guys at the moment i really do <laughs> um you know uh you know another another thing that's really important for um the digital workplace obviously is increased communication so you know uh team zoom calls team calls you need i think teams don't have that level of social interaction that they should have and I think it's massively missed from the workplace at the moment. Um, a lot of people I've spoken to have kind of said, we, you know, we've got new people on the team that we've never actually met before. I've got a new manager that I've never actually met. And then within this sort of environment at the moment, you know, we, no one likes to say it, but there are, there are a lot of redundancies being made. Um, a lot of structure changes due to those redundancies. So, I mean, you know, these people like you're often moved you might be moved into a team that you don't know or you might be um applying for a new job and um sort of going into a new team that you don't know as a business um you might have to start working with new different people um it's a smaller business if you're if you're being employed by a larger business for instance if you're a digital agency um all of a sudden you might have a completely new team that you need to start um speaking to so i think this sort of like social interaction then gets taken away so i think things using that so those communication tools you have like zoom and teams um and don't always have to talk about work either it, you know just just that level of um just catching up what maybe once a week or once every other week just to kind of keep everybody on board and keep everybody a bit sane um and you know give people a bit of familiarity yeah that's an important thing though isn't it a client i'm working with at the moment they um every friday and they've been remote working for a while now so they're they're pretty um pretty good with all of it anyway um but they have uh, virtual beers on friday where everyone just goes on a on a call um and can hop in and literally it's everything but work is on the is on the card so it's a great way just to have those those old kind of um you know rituals of going to a, to a beer garden or whatever on a, on a nice day um, that you do with your colleagues anyway um, it's a great way to keep up those sort of social interactions because you're right like there's no opportunity for that um, and it's pretty it can be pretty um, soul destroying kind of working from home and being in a room by yourself for you know, eight hours a day just just working so having those is a great um, great way just to get the team to start um, building as well absolutely and my mind always goes to these these extreme conditions obviously but you know these the maybe these kind of single people who live on their own um in in sort of this like london flat which now people kind of stay in these sort of bedroom like rooms for instance you know literally four walls and are covered and that's it um and don't have much social interactivity at all and then you know that's that's completely where they're based um my mind always goes to these kind of people and, and just how important that is to have that social interaction for the, just for these kind of people, especially as well. Yeah. So I think it's really, like I said, I think it is a very, very important part of, um, even if it's not for a business perspective, just for um, a social aspect and just to keep morale up during these times. 
and you know this this comes on to my next my next point, which is kind of being being prepared to evolve with the time. Um, at the moment, uh, a lot of people are probably still trying to work within the old ways. Um, you know, trying to make it work for them instead of actually just evolving and thinking, okay, so like I said before, it's kind of being reactive. It's like, how can we work in the current way, but then just make little tweaks to kind of continue working as we are? Well, we, we know already that this has gone on far longer than the three weeks that they originally told us it was going to happen. It was going to go on for, um, you know, this is going to be something that's going to, that's going to happen for the next few years of our life. And even after then, people are going to still be wary about, pandemics happening again and you know there's, there's going to be this level of social fear that's going to go around as well um so you know there's going to have to be a new way of, of working and i think that companies are now going to have to start to evolve to kind of sort of meet these levels of ex- expectations from the general public and from businesses um you know see it as an opportunity you know don't n- you don't have to have a place to work. A digital workplace is absolutely fine. Um, you have all the technology now to be able to create a digital workplace. Um, don't get me wrong, I'm old school. I'd still love the idea of actually being able to have a, a hub, a place where you can physically go. Um, but you do have the tools, like, I, like we said before, with, with communication tools that you don't ever have to feel left out. Like I, I speak to my colleagues regularly um, and my clients regularly all the time. And I don't feel like I haven't, I'm missing out or that I haven't met anybody. So, um, you know, just, I think that it's, it's good to sort of involve with the times and how can you build on that? You know, what's the next level of, th- what's the next level of sort of communication tools you can use? Um, and you also have to think as well, like not having an office space may not be the, the worst thing in the world if you're, especially if you're a small business, because it means there's another outgoing you don't have to pay. Um, what's a subscription to say zoom for a year compared to uh the rental of an office space for a year mm-hmm. um immediately you're spending you're saving tons and tons of money just on that so kind of see a positive out of the situation yeah exactly that and i think especially those savings it would be good to 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 see companies kind of spending a little bit on their, on their employees set up at home um especially if that's going to be the way that people are going to be expected to work for a while um, and you're right, there's, you know, leases and things that are difficult to get out of a company, especially when they're long-term leases, but, um, there might just be a future that has maybe a smaller office in mind. Um, as, as you say, like, I, I think a balance is good because I think especially within a couple of years, we're going to see the long-term, um, impact of some of this stuff. And I think everyone being remote for such a long time might have some long-term impact, but it's going to take some time to, for a lot of companies to figure that out. I think getting a balance is right though, isn't it? Because in the past we've seen companies adopt this attitude of you can kind of work from home a couple of days if, if need be. Um, and th- those were kind of the companies that were right up there on the, on the leading edge of this stuff. Um, you know, I've, I've, I've been quite lucky myself to have worked from home in, in most of my jobs actually. Um, but that's been right from right at the start where it's been, yeah, you can work from home a couple of days a week, try not to shout about it too much. And, and if HR asks anything, you know, don't, don't say anything about it right through to, um, you know, it, it's actually promoted that you're at home more than you're in the office. So there's definitely a balance for every company to strike. But I think having people working from home is hopefully something that companies will now see that works quite well, having been kind of forced through it. Um, and as we talked about as well, adopting that level of, of just trust of your employees and, and letting them work around home life as well can be super valuable in making sure that that actually works long term. So that brings me on nicely to my next point, which is sort of being innovative uh, within the digital environment um, and allowing yourself to perform at that current standard that you're used to performing at. It's, I think it's very, very important that we start being innovative now with sort of digital technologies that are available to us um, and, you know, bits and pieces of content, even marketing, for instance, within your own business. Um just so you can start performing again to that, to that, like I said, to that level that you're used to performing at. Um, there's there's loads of potential within the digital environment, so you may as well use it. Um, you know, you can do so much more than just, um, you know, for instance, if you've got like a, a meeting at home, I mean, it was innovative just for someone to say, okay, well, let's create teams 
you know it's a perfect perfect um supplement for say um an office meeting uh, in, a, in a room for instance it does everything you want if not even more because you can start adding digital features to it like having little hands up to cut in on, on certain places sharing documents in real time um you know where you'd have to probably hand out notes in an office i know not many people look at that but you know there's also the idea of getting things onto a projector people having to sit far away all of a sudden everything's in your face and it's at your own control um people can feel more relaxed in this environment as well so you know just kind of think of new innovative ways of using digital to sort of boost and enhance your performance at home um, and you will find that if you just put your, your heads together you probably will find a few different innovative ideas yeah things like just recording the meetings as well isn't it like little tips like that are just yeah. give an extra bonus that you would have never had in a in like a physical space but i think you're right there's there's loads i think that people can do as well especially for people who have suddenly been kind of thrust into the home environment maybe in in home office it's not really set up as well as it could be um you know there are tools like time tracking um apps and and various things like that that you might find useful just to find um i don't know if it's innovative is the right word but a better way to organize your own time especially in this new environment um it's, it's a great time just to kind of rethink how you approach everything, isn't it? You kind of, especially for people who have maybe gone through the day-to-day work and kind of settled in the way it work kind of ways of working a little bit. Um, it's a great refresher almost just to rethink a lot of that stuff now that you're by yourself in an office. Um, but as you say as well, there's, there's loads of stuff that a team can do, um, especially when you're thinking about developing something new together um, about making you some new tools or new ways of doing it, or just a completely different approach to what you might've done before. Um, based on kind of what you're seeing out there these days and the opportunities out there. Um, yeah. And I think that, you know, it's also quite good to, we talk about innovation, but it's also quite good to sort of use tools that have been around there for a long time. Um, and that's kind of being, you know, maybe use cloud-based technology a lot. I know a lot of companies are using it now, but a lot of companies aren't using it. And a lot of companies still using old outdated technology moving forward, start using, um, cloud-based technology and and sort of like real-time file sharing really helps um sort of keep everybody up to date and everybody together on the same page um and you know just instead of like you know when you'd be sitting in a, in a meeting for instance and you'd be sharing ideas and maybe writing a few things down on a piece of paper and passing it along um you know i don't know how people have different sort of like ways of working with an office within office meetings you can completely do that on um on these cloud-based sharing sites, things like Google, um, you know, what Scott, for instance, we use Figma, don't we, to design things, mm-hmm. um, you know, and that's sort of cloud-based sharing as well. Um, you know, real-time design actually there, you can both go into a document and design at the same time. So I think it's really, I think it's sort of really important to kind of use these technologies that maybe a lot of companies don't actually use at the moment and start. There's a lot of, there's a lot of content out there that people can use. So just, go out there look for it and bring it in. Um, and these, these, this, these content, this, like, this type of content will continuously um, be created. Different companies will make different types of content because now people are going to be more home-based. There's going to be a more demand for it, like I said before. So, you know, companies are going to be supplying more of this kind of content. And there are loads of hidden benefits as well for some companies for using kind of collaboration-based software. So, I'm thinking specifically at the moment for for like our agency, not only do we get to work remotely and work effectively on the same design or, um, or doc or, or idea, or, you know, go on a virtual whiteboard or whatever, you can then extend that to other companies as well. Um, so even if you used to be based in a physical office and might be going back to that sort of environment, it's, you know, it's great technology anyway to adopt just because it's so easy to share around with the other companies and, and people that you need to collaborate with. Absolutely. 100%. So I kind of want to, I want to kind of go f- and talk about like the agile side of things now. Um, okay. And in agile, the way forward within this digital world, um, I completely believe that it is. And we spoke about it before, Scott, briefly, and I, I just want to touch on it again, um, it, about the sort of work-life balance, if you will. So kind of getting that home life and work life. And now they've become one. Um it's going to be very difficult to for especially for people with children um to sort of be able to operate effectively in this environment mm-hmm. so, you know with um, people constantly trying to have to 
juggle work and like home life simultaneously. Um, you know, things that there's like there's normal services now that people don't have access to anymore. Childcare, nurseries, schools are becoming very limited and controlled, especially with lockdown. Some people are able to go back to schools, other people aren't. You know, classrooms aren't at full capacity anymore. Um, and I think they've got varied hours when kids go back to school. Some schools are open, some aren't. So it's very, very different for everybody. And again, we're working in a reactive way, but how can we go forward and work in a, in a, in a better way and work in a, in a more productive way? And I think taking Agile on board is probably the best way of doing it, of, of kind of attacking this and you know approaching this, this situation um you know people need to work in an agile way constantly to support their home life and you know it, you can't sell someone they can't look after their kids when they have no other option so um how are we going to go forward and sort of help help them out with this and i think that you know just allowing that sort of freedom within um work hours probably works best for everybody at the moment you know not everybody has to work in nine to five some people can work nine till um to 11 for instance and then you know they can have that three hour period where they can focus on their kids and then you know partners can switch in and out and help each other um and, you know we just work effectively around each other so everybody's kind of you think about it everybody's working with everybody in this situation it's not just people within us and within a business yeah I, I I mean the past few months for companies with um you know with everyone at home, sorry for for people with everyone at home um especially with kind of children in the mix and and that sort of stuff must have been must have been super hard I think you're right like adopting those agile that agile mindset not in just the way that people work but also maybe the the work itself um I think is pretty pretty valuable for a lot of a lot of people here so we've already talked about kind of having limited time in between and you might not have say a four hour gap to to really focus on on deep work and for some people and some companies that's still required but chunking up the work into much smaller pieces might allow people to kind of drip feed and complete tasks when they need to um and the other thing that that certainly i've struggled with being at home uh, for, for quite a long time now is just energy you know even even if i do have the actual time to sit in front of my computer often it's just quite demotivating day in day out and and i've noticed my energy really suffers in that and i find it hard to kind of get on with tasks and again it's hard to sit down when you've got very little focus and energy as a lot of us will have when working in home offices and look at a, a massive task and, crack, and kind of crack on with it and get it done whereas if you've got small little achievable tasks that you can just check off and get a few wins out of the way um that's a much better way usually of kind of getting through that work and, and actually getting some motivation so not only adopting that as you said that kind of agile mindset of, of how you work and, and kind of making things fle- uh, things flexible and flow based on the situation but also adopting some of the the kind of work principles behind that of just chunking up work into small pieces um time bounding them and and kind of having a team that can all work together to attack them might be really useful definitely definitely and you know having things like fixed hours um different schedules uh different timelines um you know just allowing people to become more adaptable yeah um, for their working at home lifestyle um i think that that just kind of really helps everybody uh, you know, think maybe maybe companies need to sort of look at bringing in more resource, for instance. I know a lot of people are actually making people redundant at the moment, but that might not be the best approach at the moment. Maybe, for instance, parents might want to do less hours, but across more days. So, you know, weekends might actually start becoming working days for people who have kids, for instance, you know, if they want to do more hours or maybe people want to do maybe a later shift within the day. And yeah. then, if there are if there is that need for a resource during the um, during the uh, uh, an earlier time in the day, you know, and you're getting another person to kind of do that, and it might start making people become a bit more productive. And yeah, so there also might be um, room for resource for these smaller companies and, and even bigger companies to start bringing more people in, um, you know, to support their permanent staff and their permanent employees who might have to actually balance this sort of work life and home life um and get that sort of good balance so you know maybe uh a permanent employee might be better or more comfortable doing later hours in the day but you might need someone to cover Mm -hmm. earlier hours during the um during the morning for instance so you know that's where contractors come in you know they can you charge maybe a, a um 
at a lower rate for um, an hourly rate, for instance. So, you know, you're not paying the full day rate for a contract. You're paying an hourly rate for them to come in and do a certain job just to kind of support um, that permanent employee, but equally probably increase productivity because you get more work done. Um, you know, and you're allowing people to work when they're comfortable. And this, this actually might be more beneficial in the long run. That it might actually help people become more productive in their role. And it might also create a better output for you and for the business. Yeah, we're seeing a lot of companies tend to go that way now, aren't we, with with the kind of uncertainty that we've seen over the past few months. I think there's this kind of unwillingness to take bets on long-term permanent staff um which is unfortunate but equally as you say it gives lots of, lots of opportunity for people to pick up um kind of freelance work or part-time work in that sense so um yeah it's definitely kind of throwing a spanner in the works there and and um change things up so yeah it'll be interesting to see how that plays going forward and i wonder if you know again agencies are it's a great time for for them to be operating right because again they're, they're able to give pretty flexible work and attack those smaller bits of of work on probably something that looks more like a fixed budget yeah definitely um you know they can provide a service to get the job done basically so you go you can get you get bigger for instance for bigger companies this might be ideal just to bring in an agency to kind of say right um we need sort of um we need this task done um we've got our permanent um employees that can kind of overlook at this but then you know we need you to just sort this issue out and it doesn't give um, the internal teams the headache of trying to sort out resource, trying to sort out um, when they're going to be working and how they're going to be working, you know, having that sort of work-life balance. They can just oversee the project, maybe even become more of like that scrum master role mm -hmm. um, for, for these digital agencies. You know, maybe they just take that role for themselves because they can work quite, um, you know, freely within their, within the timescales and things like that within their like day-to-day -day period. So, um, you know, then it's up to the digital agencies to bring in those contractors who they usually have that kind of resource on hold. And, you know, they usually have a pocket full of contractors to sort of pull on as and when they needed to. So, um, you know, it might be, like I said, like, well, like you said, for instance, digital agencies might be great um, sort of, flourish in this area right now and they might actually really see it as an opportunity yeah as you said it's just about being creative isn't it with um with resource and and everything else that you're doing really um you know how you actually approach the work and what you're doing with the work but but resource is a is a place that companies are finding it hard at the moment with uh you know people coming out from furlough at the moment uh, i'm sure a ton of work stacking up during that period and um equally having to make a lot of redundancies in in a lot of cases so um, yeah, it's just there are there are definitely creative ways to get the job done. Still, I think. Yeah, definitely. So you know, just just to kind of wrap this up, really, I think the main message from this is, although it's a scary time, um, there's also a lot of opportunity going forward. Um, you know, we have been working half in, half out of this sort of digital workplace anyway. Um, and this sort of yeah. like digital environment. So maybe I know, I know now it's, it's you're being kind of forced to fully commit to it, but it's not as scary as you think. You know, um, there there are going to be changes, but these changes can be for the good as long as you're ready to evolve and ready to plan um, how you're going to work in the future. I mean, you could really prosper in this. Um, I like, to, you know, I think I like to always think that out of these sort of pandemics and these these crazy issues that there are always success stories to come out of it and you yeah. know it's just just knowing how to navigate it i mean i think groupon um big company obviously but they made their success in the last recession um you know when everyone else was failing they managed to succeed and i'm not saying that everyone's going to be failing now but everybody is in the same boat and it's just about how you're going to evolve and adapt and you know creating a decent solid plan and a sort of new way of working to kind of navigate this sort of new environment that we've all been forced into. And yeah. I think, you know, that that's probably, you know, as long as you've got like a solid plan, I think that you'll be okay and you'll probably actually will find more success or maybe more areas um, to, become, to become successful, um, either, either as a business or just as um, an employee within this environment. 
Yeah, absolutely. There's there's still opportunity out there, isn't there? It's just about finding creative ways to to deal with the problems that we have. And I think on that note as well, you you wanted to tackle basically the other half of this in our next podcast, right? So we're going to be talking about how to um, deal with, well, the kind of outcome of COVID and how that's changed, how we approach companies and how we market and all that sort of good stuff. Yeah, absolutely. So it's, it's more going to be around how sort of companies are going to be attacking this um, from a COVID point of view. And um, we've, we've kind of um, sort of focused around uh, people today and, you know, um, maybe a, a slightly around small businesses as well. But I really want to talk about how as a business, you can we're, we're going to go out there and how we're going to market and network um, and, you know, kind of, the kind of digital content that's going to help us move forward within this environment. Great. Well, that'll be out in a couple of weeks and uh, do keep an eye out for that one. But um, thanks so much. Sean. That was a really interesting conversation. Yeah, thanks for that, Scott. Really enjoyed that. Awesome. Well, um, yeah, two weeks and we'll be out again. So, so do keep an eye out for that one. Um, and just as last week, if you've enjoyed this episode, we'd love if you told a colleague or a friend. Um, we're trying to build our audience at the moment, so that'd be super helpful. And um, yeah, join us next week for episode 10. Is that right? Yep, I think it is. Yeah, wow. That's crazy. <laughs> Double figures. I don't know if it feels like we've been doing this forever or for, for a very short time and that's come up really quickly. I can't quite tell. But uh, a yeah. <laughs> <laughs> bit of both. Um, awesome. Good. Well, um, yeah. Thanks for listening, everyone, today and we'll catch you next time. Cool. Thanks, guys. Bye. Thanks for joining us today and we hope you've enjoyed the episode. We wanted to let you know a little about our digital agency. We design and build killer experiences and apps. And we also put out a bunch of free content to help companies of all shapes and sizes. Head to fluffdigital.com to find out more.